My name is Ankur Saxena. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at UNC. Neuroblastoma is this really fascinating cancer in a lot of different ways. So um, when we think about cancer, we usually think about the accumulation of mutations, which is why usually it happens in old age. Thankfully, pediatric cancers are much more rare, uh, but they do sometimes happen. And within that group of cancers, neuroblastoma is actually the most common one in the first year of life. So it not only happens in these young kids, but when you have neuroblastoma in about 60%-ish or so of patients, it metastasizes. And that's really the danger. It's not the original tumor, but when it gets away, it goes to different locations where it can cause problems. Um, once that metastasis happens, then the five-year survival goes down to less than 50%, unfortunately. Neuroblastoma is thought to derive predominantly from what are called sympathoadrenal cells. So these are cells that you find located in your adrenal gland um, right above your kidney. And those cells, the sympathoadrenal cells, are known to come from the neural crest. So we thought, okay, cool, let's put this cancer that comes from the neural crest next to the crest and see what happens when they move. Turns out we ended up finding something unexpected. And what we found was we wanted to look at migration, but instead what we found was that sometimes these cancer cells being carried along with the neural crest with their grandparent cell type were actually differentiating, turning into neurons and dying. That was entirely unexpected. So once we saw that, we kind of went off on that angle. And that's what this first paper is really about is that we found a way um, to take the microenvironment that we're putting these cells into and turn them into something that's not actually malignant anymore. So the next step for this research really uh, revolves around finding new therapeutic targets for neuroblastoma. What we've done so far is to now establish this model system that lets us say, okay, we can see these cancer cells becoming something else, and that's great. What I haven't mentioned is that the cells, both the ones that we inject into our embryos and cells within the embryos themselves are fluorescently labeled with different colors, green fluorescent protein, red fluorescent protein. And so we can track where these cells are going and what they're doing over time, over hours and hours. It's really beautiful to look at these cells behaving in vivo. Uh, and so now what we can do is say, all right, we have a phenomenon, cells are differentiating into neurons. Let's pull these cells out once they're differentiating. Before, when they're still cancer, when they're starting to become neurons and when they really have become neurons. And then we can do what's called single cell RNA-seq or proteomics to look at either the RNA or the protein respectively and the whole cell on a cell by cell basis and see how those things are changing over time. So when we do that, the hope is that it's gonna yield new findings about the different uh, genes that are up, up and down regulated and give us more insight into what's actually causing this differentiation to happen. Some of those uh, signaling factors that are going to be involved in that process are going to be, we hope, therapeutic targets that can then be pursued by other groups or companies to develop uh, in detail.